use a center of gravity um, in Inventor Publisher 2013. So Publisher, um, by default, does not have any um, mass properties. There's no densities of materials assigned, and therefore it can't give you an automatic um, center of gravity position when you import an Inventor assembly or any other CAD assembly for that matter. So in order to do this, we're going to have to uh, produce a little workaround. We're going to use iLogic for this, and this is hopefully a really nice solution to uh, enable you to dimension to uh, and use the center of gravity of an assembly. So I'm going to assemble a couple of uh, components in here, uh, in my assembly. So I've got a new assembly here. I'll stick these uh, components in here, all in random locations. Right, so once I've done that, um, I've got an iLogic rule in here, so we'll see how this works first and then we'll look a bit closer at it in a second. So if I run this rule, what you'll see it's done is it's found a CFG part um, and it's actually assembled that uh, in the assembly in the center of gravity location. So if I move a few of these parts around, let's say this assembly changes or perhaps we um, take a copy of this part and add add another one in, so on and so forth. Now if I, um, obviously our CFG has changed, if I find this iLogic rule again now and run this, you'll see that the locations change there. So one thing that we can do very, very easily is add a form in here. Um, if we go and find our rule, drag this into the form, then we've got our, um, we can call this form whatever we like of course. Now we've got Let's just try moving a few of these components. Now we've got quick access to change the center of gravity position there um, with no worries. Um, so here's our center of gravity part that we can dimension to in Publisher. Um, so let's have a little look at how this rule works. So let's go in here. Okay, so the first thing the rule does is it'll delete the CFG part if it's already present. Now I've used a try catch statement for this um, because otherwise you may get an error if you don't have a CFG part in there already. So let's just try this. If I delete this CFG part and run the rule again, um, that's fine. It's going to add it in there in, in the correct location. But if I go back into my rule and don't have a... Um, I comment these out and try that. Now if I for some reason have deleted my CFG part and I bring my uh, try and run that rule, it's going to it's going to give me an error because um, it can't find that CFG part. So that's um, that's a useful tip to um, prevent those kind of errors is use a try catch statement there. So I'll unco uncomment this now. Okay, and then all we're doing here is this is standard API um, code in Inventor to, to find the point, uh, the position of the center of gravity, create some I properties uh, called CX, CY, CZ that uh, have the value, the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the center of gravity, correct the units there, and then uh, place the, uh, here's the, the key line here, to place the, um, the part um, that you want to use as your sort of dummy CFG. So you need to make sure that this part um, is in the same folder, in the same location as your assembly. And obviously you need to make sure it's got the .ipt um, after it or .iam if that's what you're using. Um, okay, so, and then we've got a message box at the end saying there's no CFG available. Now this is if um, you don't have any components in the assembly already. So Let's just try um, deleting everything. So we've got an empty assembly here. If I try and run this rule now, it will give me that message box. It will say, please insert some components before um, before you run this. Okay, so if we stick these in there again. Then if I run that, that should work fine. I think this part's got very low density, so it's not it's not having that much of an effect on there. There we are. Okay, so you can dimension to this in Publisher when you bring it in. One thing that you may want to do is to have this um, 
this rule run automatically, set it on an event trigger to run automatically when you close an assembly. The other thing that you may want to do is uh, if you delete, once you've got this rule set up, copy and paste the rule into an assembly template or new assembly and then just go file, save as, save copy as template and then you can overwrite or create a new template. I've got a CFG template in there with that rule inside it. Okay, I hope you find this very helpful. Thanks a lot.